Hey everyone, what's up? It's Dr. Charlie Johnson, physical therapist. And in today's video, I want to um, create something kind of short and sweet, but I want to share with you a principle um, that I think is really useful. And I share with a lot of my um, clients, my patients, um, trying to resolve their sort of back butt leg problems naturally using movement um, as medicine. So if you're using exercise to try to solve your piriformis sciatica back problem, then you'll want to stick around for this video because I'm going to share with you sort of just a different way of thinking of how you can use this movement in sort of a more effect, effective and or efficient manner. Okay, so uh, that being said, for those of you who don't know me, again, my name is Dr. Charlie Johnson. I'm a physical therapist. Um, I have my board specialty in orthopedics, and I essentially help uh, people all around the world uh, with unresolved back, butt, and leg problems. Many various diagnoses within that, but um, I essentially... Uh, my goal is to teach you, somebody like you, right, um, the tools, knowledge, and understanding, right, needed to solve this problem naturally so you can avoid things like pill shot surgery um, and or relying on someone else to fix you. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. Let's talk about this concept of using movement as medicine. All right, so to kick this off, there is a quote I like that sort of drives all of my content. So if you watch my other videos, right, sometimes people get on me because they're like, hey, like, what's the exercise to solve my problem? There is no one exercise to solve your problem um, because the body's all integrated and theoretically you can use many different ways to solve your issue. So I'm not big on just sort of, sort of sharing like really high level tactical advice. Instead, um, you need to understand the principles. And I think this sums up really well, this quote. Okay. So basically it says, as to methods, there may be a million and then some, but principles are few. The man who grasps principles can successfully select his own methods. The man who tries methods, ignoring principles is sure to have trouble. So my goal is to teach you the methods and sort of the principles driving, you know, why you would do what you would do so that you can be in a better position. Okay. So that being said, let's talk about this. So I want you to think about movement as medicine, right? So prescription, right? So think about just any medicine that you would ever receive, right? So you have that kind of orange pill bottle, maybe somewhere in your cabinet, right? And on it, there's a label. And that label includes sort of three elements, the dose, so how much you should take, uh, the frequency, how often you should take it, and when you should take it. So we're all familiar with this idea of like, hey, let's take 500 milligrams, right, of this anti-inflammatory, right? We'll do it, um, I don't know, two times a day. And uh, when do you take it? Maybe you take it in the uh, morning. So we'll say a.m., and then uh, with milk. So maybe there's instructions even how to take it, right? Or with food, right? Um, for some reason, I think milk. I don't know why, but my brain went there. Okay, so um, you've got this prescription. No matter the medicine you take, it's going to have some prescription, which is going to include essentially three things, dose, frequency, and timing. Now, um, what I want you to think about is how you use everyday medicine. So for example, let's just say, for example, that you had a headache, all right? And you've got kind of four scenarios. It's like, if you had a headache that came on at 2 p.m. every single day, you know, max headache, this is when the thing is just throbbing, when would you take that pill, that headache pill? Say you had the headache pill that could always take it away and it was your go-to. Well, would you take it in scenario A? Would you take it, say, at, I don't know, 9 a.m. early in the morning, even though your headache starts at 2 p.m.? Would you take it or would it make most sense to take the medication, this headache pill, at about 1, 8 or 1 p.m. when this headache kind of begins? Would it make sense to take it when things are kind of at the point of no return, when your headache is really pounding? Or in scenario D, would it make most sense to let the headache come and let it go and take it at, say, 7 p.m. or 5 p.m. later, way beyond um, when you started to notice your headache? And probably if you're watching this, right, you would agree that it probably makes most sense to sort of go along with scenario B, right? So if you know that around 2 p.m. your headache is going to be really bad every day, why not take it and kind of nip it right when it starts, right? Uh, initially by taking the headache pill. Some might argue, hey, you know, I wait for it to kind of get bad and then I take it because I don't really like pills, whatever. But the idea is that like these probably don't make sense. You wouldn't take it at, you know, 8, 9 a.m. if the headache's at 2 p.m. and you wouldn't take it at 7, 8 p.m. if the headache's at 2 p.m. Just wouldn't make sense. Right. So I think this makes most sense. And hopefully that's logical and you can agree with that. Right. So if that's logical and if that's how you would take a pill for some other ache or pain or problem in your body, then why not apply the same concept to movement? Right. So again, if you think of movement as a pill, right here. And here's the thing it could be many things, right? There could be literally 
hundreds of different movement combinations. So that could be anything really, but uh, maybe it's a back bend. I say that because lots of people with back problems try back bends, right? I'm not saying you should do that or not, right? Maybe it's a certain stretch, whatever it is. It's probably something that you saw maybe on YouTube, or maybe you were given a sheet of exercise like so many people are given, and maybe you're doing a bunch of them, all right? So you've got all these different exercises you're trying. Um, you know, there's a certain how much. So that might be, hey, you do, I don't know, 10 reps. Make this really clean. And you do three sets. I'll actually write it out like this. 10 reps times three sets. Great. And then how often should I do this, right? Uh, somewhere on your printout of exercises, right? Or maybe somebody told you to do this, or maybe it was recommended online. They say, hey, do this uh, three times a day. And when do you do it? Hmm, good question. So notice there's a pause there, right? So a lot of times it's kind of just like, you know, whenever, <laughs> like whenever I can do it, I go to PT, I get these exercises and whenever I can fit it in, right? When do you go to the Cairo? Whenever you can fit it in after work, before work, at lunch, whatever, right? But there's often not a lot of time devoted to figuring out and optimizing the timing piece of things, all right? So we want to kind of dive deeper. So um, the dose, right, we can tweak that or manipulate that. The frequency, we can manipulate that. Um, and the timing, we can absolutely be a little bit more scientific about. And this is a principle I want you to understand. Now, before I get there, real quick, I do want to mention that um, this is one pill bottle. Consider that each motion is its own individual pill bottle. That's really important. And what I mean by that, and the reason I say it's really important, is because you don't take like millions of pills at one time. Now, you might argue you have a whole pill thing, and you do, right? But if you think about it, like if your intent is to solve one problem, maybe you have many different problems. But if your intent is to fix one problem, maybe you have this leg pain, this back pain, whatever, right? It's probably one thing causing all this stuff. Then why would you take? all these pills at one time. You'll never know the interaction. And then what happens is just like in traditional medicine, you're taking one pill to offset the symptoms or the uh, uh, adverse effects of another pill. And so you're just treating like the effect of these things, right? And before you know it, you have a bunch of pills. So at the end of the day, it just leads to confusion. So this is why I recommend, right? And why I say, hey, you're just one motion away, right? Um, the idea behind that is, could it be that you're two motions away or three motions away? Yeah, absolutely. But like it makes sense to just simplify your life and simplify the process by focusing on just one thing. So if you've got, you know, all these pill bottles, right? Boom, pill bottle, pill bottle, pill bottle. And each of these is a different motion, right? So exercise one, exercise two, exercise three. What you want to do is you want to say, hey, even if you don't know, and look, there's a process for figuring this out, okay? But it's a little bit beyond the point of this video. Like start with just one, start with one pill bottle, start with one medication, all right, and stick with a certain dose, however much you were told to do or frequency or whatever. But now let's talk about the timing because you can be even more scientific than you have been probably. All right, so first thing is like eliminate, select one, could just be one that feels the best or something like that. That's fine to start with, but you've got to start somewhere. Meaning a lot of people get paralyzed at this stage. They're like, oh my gosh, I have this whole sheet of exercises, Charlie. And they give me so many things to do. Like, where do I begin? Well, you've got to start somewhere. It's really hard to steer a car if you're sitting in the parking lot. So you've got to get going. And then you've got to let, um, you know, the, the GPS or Siri or whoever, right, uh, redirect you, okay? I'm trying to redirect you a little bit, all right? So you pick one. And then you want to apply this concept of using movement as medicine. Now, again, this is just an example, all right? This whole backbend idea could be really anything. Um, but let's just say that on the left side, you've got yuckiness, zero to 100. 100 is the yuckiest, the worst feeling ever, right? And then you've got time on the bottom. And just to make it kind of like relatable to the last um, example with the whole headache, let's just say that after lunch sometime, for whatever reason, um, you know that your symptoms in your back, butter, leg are going to fire up. It could be at night, it could be in the morning, but let's just say around 2 p.m. after lunch, right? Or it could be that maybe you have a long drive in the afternoon, or maybe you know that you're going to be doing a lot of lifting or bending or twisting or you're going to have to teach a class or do whatever, right? And you're going to be up and walking around a lot, all right? Whatever it is, you have something you know is going to elevate your symptoms. Instead of kind of living by the old model of, hey, here's a whole sheet of exercise. And I'm going to do all kinds of things whenever I can do them. Why not get even more refined? 
And what I would argue is take one of those things, so you're simplifying stuff, getting rid of all the stuff, taking one of those things. And then what you're doing is you're doing right before that thing, which you know will potentially or will aggravate symptoms. Okay, so the other day um, in my program, the Glute Relief Accelerator program, I was on a coaching call and um, a woman named Christina said, hey, you know, driving is something that's really tough for me. How can I solve this? And, you know, we talked about a lot of things, but when we talked about motion, one thing we reminded her of is to think of movement as medicine. So a lot of times people just do motion and they do it blindly. They don't think about the whole headache concept of when to do it. And the timing is very important. So rather than just waking up and doing a whole sheet of exercise in the morning, just because, right? If your pain starts at 2 PM, why would you do it in the morning? You wouldn't do that with a headache pill or any other med. So why would you do it with the motion? Okay. So take one of those motions. So it makes it feasible and doable. And then what I would ask that you would do is that you would do that right before the onset of your symptoms. Maybe you have a lot of driving and you know, driving sucks. Maybe you have a lot of walking, standing, bending, lifting. Maybe you just have a meeting. Maybe you just know that time of day, things are worse. It doesn't matter. Stop during your lunch break or wherever you are, right? And see if you can take movement as your medicine, do some reps, pick a certain dose and frequency. It probably doesn't matter. Honestly, we can talk more about that, but just take it appropriately, right? Don't do it in the morning. You could, if you want, but don't do it. In the, it doesn't really make sense, right? So just make sure that if you are going to do it over here, that you at least take it and apply the concept of movement as medicine and do that thing right before, um, you know, that what you're going to have trouble with. So if you have trouble sleeping, guess what? Like I would be sitting on the edge of your bed or lying on the floor doing whatever you're doing. Again, which exercise do is beyond the scope of this video, but like I would take something that feels good or that you feel makes you feel better. And I would do it and snack on that right before you go to bed. I'd do a bunch of it to get yourself feeling good. Go to bed. If you have pain mostly in the morning when you wake up, do it then. If you have pain in the afternoon, do it right after lunch. Do it before you step into the car. Do it before that presentation. Do it before the walk. Whatever it is you have trouble with, think of movement as medicine. All right. So I think that's actually all I got. Hopefully that concept is useful. Look, if you want to understand, okay, the concepts like this, right, that I teach to people and the overall process, because here's the thing, right? So many people, what they do is when they're in pain, they focus on pain relief. And it totally makes sense. Like I'm hurting and I want relief. But then what happens is they're here. Here's you, maybe right now watching this, wherever you are. And then there's all this stuff on YouTube, in your town, PTs, chiros, all these possible options, right? And because you're in pain relief, one day is kind of good. So you're like, okay, I don't really need to do anything. And the next day you're like, oh, this sucks. And then you go there and then that doesn't really work. So the next day you go here and then that works for a few days and then it's really bad. And then you're like, oh, wait, maybe I need to try something else. What happens is you just start doing all kinds of stuff. Instead, you could take all of this, all of this chaos, right? And eliminate it, get rid of it, right? Because just like the quote says, there may be millions of different methods or tactics, exercises, strategies, do this, don't do that. And it's overwhelming and confusing, but principles are few. And when I say principles, right, principles like movement is medicine, okay, for example, it doesn't matter the movement that you're doing. You can still take any motion, use the principle and apply it and have more success than you're having right now. Instead of focusing on pain relief, focus on a pain relief process. Step one, optimize the environment. You've got to clean up things physically in your environment that are consistently nicking the scab. You've got to learn to do some detective work to figure out what those things are because you don't know what you don't know. And you've got to also look at the thoughts, beliefs, concerns, worries, fears, things like that, that are building up mentally because pain is just as much physical as it is mental and emotional, right? Uh, so that you can have the best chance of healing. Then you've got to learn to self-assess. You are the one in pain. You have to take control of that. Unfortunately, because you're the one in pain, you are going to be the best one to evaluate it. But has anybody ever taught you how to self-evaluate? No, probably not. So what happens is you go to people and this was me, right? So I was at a point in my career years ago where I was doing all the evaluating and fixing. Guess what that resulted in? People becoming dependent upon me to evaluate and fix them. And they go home and they don't know how to fix themselves, right? So you can't manage what you don't measure, right? So you need to go ahead and you need to learn to measure your body for yourself so you can see and feel it. And then from there, Right, you can use principles, a decision-making framework, 
so that you understand how to use both the mind and the body or movement, right, as your medicine. I'll say mid, all right. There's a million and one ways to do this. Many different motions, many different stretches. You've seen it here. If you're in pain, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you're bouncing around all over the place, trying millions of different things. At the end of the day, if you focus on pain relief, you will be very frustrated because it will switch day to day and you will jump around. It's exhausting. If you focus on a pain relief process, the process never changes. Optimize the environment because you cannot exercise a bad diet. Learn to self-assess because you're the one with symptoms. And you have to manage so that you can measure it. Okay. And then learn to use the mind and movement as medicine and learn a decision-making framework so that you can understand what to do. All right. And, you know, think about it. If you're learning to ride a bike, right, you don't need to relearn how to ride a bike when you uh, are in this terrain per se, or in this terrain, or if it's rainy, or if it's sunny, or if it's cloudy, or if you're in this state or that state, you just know how to ride a bike because you know how to spin your wheels and you know how to do this and you know how to do this. And it doesn't matter. I could plop you anywhere and you could still learn how to ride the bike. How is that possible? Because you understand the principles behind how to ride a bike. But if you don't understand the principles, then what happens is you're just stuck. Then you're just trying random things. And random inputs equal random outputs. Random tactics, random exercise without understanding why you're doing what you're doing. Without understanding principles like using movement as medicine and timing things and understanding what the heck is going on and how to figure out what you should or should not be doing, right? will result in random outcomes. If it's good, you don't know why it's good. If it's not good, then you don't know why it's not good. If it's bad, then you don't know why it's bad. All right, so um, look, if you wanna learn the tactics and sort of the, the overall pain relief process and sort of uh, some of the principles that I help teach to people inside of my Glute Relief Accelerator program, go ahead, check out our free workshop um, where I review uh, everything and share that all with you. Um, and again, this is the same process, um, and I share the same tactics that I use to help people all over the world with these unresolved back butt and leg problems. So thanks so much for checking this out. Hopefully this was helpful, but again, uh, learn, do, teach. Information is great. Transformation is better. So once you learn this concept, go try it. You know, if you want to take those motions, cool, cross some things off, boom, go do it. All right. Uh, if you need help identifying which motions and how to go about that, that is the purpose of, say, working with someone like me. You don't have to, but uh, if you want my help, uh, comment below and or check out that workshop. Thanks so much, everyone. Chat soon.